Hi right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything on this planet. It is a gorgeous, a little bit hot in the sunshine, but I'm enjoying the cool shade of the deep piney woods here at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this glorious Monday afternoon. It is Labor Day. It is, some people would consider the last day of the summer of 2023. Uh, September 4th as the planet I guess gets ready to wake up tomorrow and get back to work. Get out there and get her done. <clears throat> get out there and get her done. Keep this ball rolling. This can kicking. For another day, good lord, but here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, the wild weekend has wrapped up, and I, uh, up here at the top of the world on this beautiful day, you can hear my little chippy hound in the background, uh, just enjoying this absolutely glorious, calm, peaceful, stress-free, Summer day, uh, I was thinking, uh, you know, it's just hard to think about the collapse of a planet when everything is looking like this on this gorgeous summer day. So I'm playing around with uh, what to do today. And I guess Sister Sandy over at Environmental Coffee House has made my work a little bit easier because... Sandy has claimed uh, the latest essay by this fellow simply by the name of B in, uh, at medium.com with his newest rant today. Stop using the word sustainability for God's sake. So anyway, I I don't know how many of B's essays I have covered, so uh, be sure to tune in to Environmental Coffee House tomorrow evening, and you can, we will let Sister Sandy do a fine job of covering that excellent article, so I'm just playing around with all of my choices, and somehow I have ended up on the Detroit Free Press. Here in Yahoo News on Labor Day on this spectacularly gorgeous, calm, peaceful, stress-free day. We're going to uh, go from this little oasis of uh, this little oasis of tranquility and beauty. And we're going to go down to hell on earth, which is Haiti. I just, uh, you know, any chronicler of the collapse would be remiss in his or her duties without checking in uh, with this goddamn shithole cesspool of a country named Haiti. Uh, good lord, I, I don't know why I always choose Nigeria to use as the poster child for, uh, what, the collapse of, you know, everything, the economy, the collapse of society, the breakdown of, of just, just the total breakdown of society, uh, and certainly the ecological uh, collapse of a planet. We cannot forget that uh, down there in Haiti. And uh, so while I'm sitting here enjoying this beautiful day of peace and tranquility, we're going to let this fellow named Mitch Albom, A-L-B-O-M, Mitch, uh, well, maybe he is from Detroit since he uh, 
Press. This is in the Detroit Free Press. But anyway, Mitch has been traveling to Haiti for about 10 years, and somehow this man, uh, he must be an absolute glutton for punishment. This man, who, yes, he is definitely a honky, uh, has somehow his cross to bear working in a Haitian orphanage. Can you imagine working in a Haitian orphanage. He's been doing this for, I guess, about 10 years. And this is Mitch's latest plea to fall on deaf ears. Uh, his postcard from hell in Haiti in 2023, titled, As Haiti Descends Into Hell, the world watches and does nothing. I don't uh, exactly know what Mitch Albon thinks the rest of the world is supposed to do for Haiti, do about Haiti. Uh, but anyway, this is what, uh, as the rest of the world shrugs its shoulders, and goes on about uh, watching Barbie movies. This is what is going on on Hell on Earth. <clears throat> this, you know what is going on in Haiti, this has to stop. That's what you tell yourself. People cannot live every day with murder and destruction. They cannot live with gangs marching into their neighborhoods, setting their homes on fire, and chasing residents into the streets, leaving them to flee everything they own and sleep with their children huddled in public squares. They cannot live with gang members killing husbands in front of their wives or raping wives on the bodies of their dead husbands, or shooting parents in front of their children coldly, deliberately, without hesitation or an ounce of compassion. They cannot live with daily kidnappings nearly 1,000 already this year alone, people yanked out of lines, snatched off of buses, or ordered from their cars at gunpoint. They cannot live with the inability to travel anywhere because the roads are controlled by bandits who demand payment for passage whether you are going to a funeral or taking your child to the hospital. <clears throat> they cannot live with basic needs such as food or fuel controlled by gangs who can shut off the supply at any time, sending black market prices soaring. They cannot live with bullets by day, fires by night, terror around the clock. This has to stop. Any decent human being would agree with that. So why hasn't it? No, why hasn't it stopped? Mm. The country cannot save itself. This has to stop. You cannot run a country when the government has one unelected man in office and literally nobody else in charge. You can't run a country when there has not been an election in seven years. You cannot run a country when police officers, police officers 
are more poorly armed than gangs, when cops quit in frustration, I, I guess 800, 800 cops threw in the towel a few days ago in Haiti, uh, just at this point trying to save their own lives. You cannot run a country when cops quit in frustration, when officers, meaning cops, join the criminals to survive, or provide uniforms to gang members to pose as police and continue their crimes. You cannot run a country when hospitals must close for fear of gang violence. You can't run a country when doctors won't come to work and nurses flee. You can't run a country when a major tuberculosis center has to close due to gang violence, as one did last week, and all the sick patients are released into the streets, sparking fear of a TB outbreak in a nation where that disease is still a killer. You can't run a country when churches are not safe, when orphanages are not safe, when missionaries are kidnapped, and when congregations are shot at. You can't run a country when citizens feeling abandoned by everyone, take to fighting back with the same brutal violence inflicted upon them, murdering gang members in the streets, burning their bodies, lynching them in public. Yes, I said lynching. There have been multiple lynchings here in 2023. That word alone is enough to spark outrage and action in America. Why does no one care when it happens in Haiti? This has to stop. Why hasn't it? Why hasn't the United States, hmm, why hasn't the United States, which occupied Haiti for 15 years in the 20th century, which wrote its constitution, which stored Haiti's money in its banks, stepped forward to keep this nation from slipping into hell? Why has the U.S. refused to lead a humanitarian effort to save the citizens from slaughter here. There have been some 2,400 reported murders in Haiti in the first seven and a half months of this year alone. They are dying from terror. When America lost 2,996 citizens to terror on 9-11, it sparked a decades-long war that, in some ways, is still going on. Yes, you see how uh, how uh, good fighting terror with terror has worked out in the case of 9-11. So I guess uh, we need some of that humanitarian aid from the U.S. taxpayers. It is the U.S. taxpayers' job to pony up the money for a humanitarian aid mission to hell. No one expects America to react as strongly to a horror that is not its own, but it should make us sensitive to terrorism. And that's what life in Haiti is now. Daily terrorism. 
by violent, lawless men. Haiti, 90 minutes away in an airplane. This isn't Afghanistan. This isn't Ukraine. Haiti is 700 miles off the shores of Florida. If China or Russia showed a sudden military interest in this island, you can be sure there would be swift action. But saving people from daily murder and mayhem is not a good enough reason to get involved. Instead, the U.S. Embassy, and of course, I would say for damn good reason, and sensibly cleared out most of its people and issued a warning last week that all Americans here, like me, should get out now. That is an answer. Uh, I, I think uh, th that is exactly what it is. Uh, Mitch, I, you know, it's not often that I agree with, uh, I guess, the U.S. State Department. Is that who that would be? Uh, but this is one rare instance when I 100% agree with uh, the uh, U.S. Embassy's uh, in Haiti's uh, warning to Americans to get out now. I, I think my response to that article was any clueless moron American still living in Haiti uh, <laughs> deserves everything he or she has coming to them for being such an idiot. That is an answer? Where is the rest of the world? The, the rest of the world is minding its own business. Where is the rest of the world? This isn't a new situation. Huh. When the 2010 earthquake, when the 2010 earthquake devastated Haiti, the UN came here and for the next seven years while the nation rebuilt, there was relative peace, there were elections, and people moved freely about. But, against the advice of many, the UN pulled out before Haitian police were fully staffed and trained, and the quick and steady power grab by gangs began. In the last two years, 200,000 people have reportedly been chased from their homes by this violence. 200,000? And as the bodies pile up in the streets, the UN dithers with resolutions. This has to stop. Why has it it? Just imagine if you were here, uh, you know, trying to imagine uh, being in Haiti right now uh, is, you know, my mind cannot go there. It takes me into what uh, Don Juan Matus uh, would say trying to imagine myself being in Haiti. Uh, it, it, it takes me to a place beyond no pity, uh, which is a great, uh, you, you know, just when you're confronted uh, with such a level of horror, that, uh, you know, anybody trying to save their sanity, getting beyond pity is not enough. You have to get beyond the place of no pity 
to uh, if you really try to picture what collapse really looks like. <clears throat> Back to Mitch. I have been coming here to Haiti every month since early 2010. I operate an orphanage here. Over the years, we have been home to more than 100 amazing children whose faith, joy, and optimism are remarkable given that many come to us with no parents, no shelter, no birth certificates, with all of their worldly possessions fitting in a single 12-inch cubby, they go on to grow, play, love, develop compassion, and become highly educated with a dozen already thriving in universities in America and one in medical school at Michigan State. Many more will follow, and all of them, all of them are committed to returning to Haiti to make their country better. Hmm. But what will they come back to? What will be left Last week, gangs set a police station on fire in the strategic neighborhood that I cannot pronounce and chased people from their homes during the night. They went running through the streets hoping not to be murdered. Well, I would be, uh, I would be uh, uh, hoping to be murdered. You know, what's, what's that quote about it won't be long when the living will envy the dead? Uh, if, if anybody is, is, is still hoping not to be murdered in, uh, in, in Haiti, uh, if this neighborhood should fall into gang control, the fear is the sliver of Port-au-Prince that has remained out of the gang's hands will soon fall as well. Our orphanage is one neighborhood away. These past few nights, our staff has huddled around a table contemplating an, evacua an evacuation plan. But how do you move 60 children and 40 staff members? Where do we go? How do we feed everyone? Find somewhere to sleep? What happens to the home we have built here? Must we abandon everything and run? Imagine strange men showing up one night and setting your house on fire or entering with guns and telling you to leave now, never come back. History has witnessed this before, and when outside nations don't act, the results are disastrous. Don't listen to intellectuals who have never set foot here telling you that Haitians don't want help because it's akin to occupation. No one cares about labels when men with rifles are approaching. I can tell you, anyone here can tell you that people are desperate for outside intervention. A poll in February showed that 70% of the Haitians were in favor of it. I promise you that number is much higher now. This has to stop. You would tell yourself that if you were in the middle of it. It is madness. It's horrifying. And... While I appreciate my government telling me to get out 
for my own safety, what about the children we take care of? Are they worth less than me? With all due respect, the answer is not getting out. It's getting in. This has to stop. The only way it is if the world ceases rolling its eyes at Haiti and starts thinking of those innocent people here as they would think about their own family and takes action. There you go. And then uh, following that, I have a long ad uh, from the stop and shop at my uh, at my local grocer. Man, look at those delicious grapes, buck forty nine a pound. Man, pork ribs. Sancha, there's pork ribs for sale for a dollar ninety nine a pound. Uh at the grocery store down the street at the stop and shop buck 99 a pound for pork ribs all right a buck 97 for ritz crackers man i am getting hungry uh, look at all the food look at all the food Man, buy one, get one free? Wow. All right, Sancho, uh, you got to wrap up chasing your chippies. Uh, there's pork ribs for sale for a buck ninety-nine a pound. And it is Labor Day. And I got to get a fellow earthling uh, on the grill because uh, I'm getting hungry here in the end times. So, uh, don't know if the comment that I left, that was directly from the Detroit Free Press. I don't know if uh, my comment at the end of Mitch's article uh, has been ripped down or not by the Yahoo community. I'm going to take a wild guess that it has. Uh, my comment was something like, uh, let's try this for starters. Let's grant asylum to any Haitian who agrees to get themselves and their children sterilized immediately upon entering the land of the free and see how many Haitians take us up on our gracious offer. Otherwise, Haiti made its own bed. Let them lie in it. And the, uh, make your own bed uh, lie in it comment was repeated about 500 times to Mitch's article. Uh, you know, guys, just, uh, I, I mean, Haiti is gone. It's, uh, I, I, I personally uh, am at the place beyond no pity. Uh, we just have to let that cesspool burn. Just let it burn. Let it go. Let it burn. And then, of course, the bigger question is, uh, when will my own little sheltered, peaceful, tranquil life look like Haiti? Uh... I only hope when the 
men with rifles come for me in the middle of the night as Antonio Reed would say I hope they make it a clean headshot get out there and uh Evacuate Haiti while you still can before Haiti comes for you. Bye, guys.